Good morning, beloveds. I'm sitting here quietly and have been because um, I came back from the park soaking wet. And it was an interesting day in the park. Uh, the soccer leagues have started up for the fall. And uh, the first thing we saw was a hawk. We weren't sure it was a hawk until we got to the back corner of the park. And then the hawk flew down low and landed in a tree. And I may have gotten a picture, but you probably can't tell, you know, because they blend in. Uh, and then it flew off again before I could line up for another uh, picture. So I was just like, all right. And then uh, towards the end, we had a blue jay that decided to just hop around on the ground and pose. And I was like, all right. So hopefully one or one or a few of those will come out. And then there was one where I was trying to catch a picture of a squirrel. And I was like, it, the light wasn't right. So I walked around the tree and ended up. Uh, another squirrel ran up the tree so I got them two in a line so hopefully one of those will come out uh, and then when we came home and we parked um, there was a female cardinal in our holly bush right there at the end of the the garage and I could see her but I could never quite get her lined up where I could take a picture of her um, so and she was talking and somebody was talking back to her so it was interesting you never know what you're going to see in the holly bush. But, so, it's been a good day so far. All right. And it is August 19th. Our title is The Science of Being. Our author is Ida B. Elliott. And this was published in Mind Remakes Your World which may have been edited by Holmes, interesting, uh, from 1941. So, okay. The real meaning of the word religion, and then it's, re it's re-legio in parentheses, is to bind back. And that is just what the student does in their application of the omnipresence. In the allegory of the Garden of Eden is a portrayal of the omnipresence, the one presence, mind, or intelligence creating or coming forth in the invisible out of its own substance. It, and it was said of each manifestation, good and very good. Um, people in the image and likeness of God with every good provided for them was commissioned to have dominion over all things. There was just one thing they were not to do, which was to eat of the tree of good and evil or conceive for themselves a world of duality. Throughout the remainder of the Bible, we find people working their way out of sense delusion an illusion into conscious oneness with their source made manifest by the man, Jesus. Okay. So this is one of those cases where I'm going to tell you <laughs> one of my teachers in ministerial school was Reverend Norm. Uh, and Reverend Norm, may he rest in peace, which I know Reverend Norm, he's not resting in peace, um, would say, and he would say this about the Bible. When you take things out of context, they don't always make sense. His, so his suggestion is, is like, if you see a Bible quote, go read the chapter that the quote came from. And that's kind of the way I feel about this. It's like, I think I understand where she's coming from. But I'm not entirely sure. So it's like, maybe I'm going to go look and see if I can buy the book or if, uh, depending on, well, from 1941, I was like, it may be available as a, P a free PDF on, uh, on, on the internet. So, um, and, and read like the chapter that it comes from because what she's diving into is deep. It is deep. And I can tell just from reading the just re from reading the book it's deep and i'm just like what so she's talking about the science of being the real meaning of the word religion is to bind back okay and that is just what the student does in their application of the omnipresence so when we apply the omnipresence 
Uh, in the allegory of the Garden of Eden is a portrayal of the omnipresence. One presence, mind, or intelligence creating or coming forth in the invisible out of its own substance. What? Honestly, what she is saying is God creates manifestations out of itself. There is one substance. All substance is God's substance. So uh, God is manifesting out of its own substance. Okay. Uh, and it is said of each manifestation, good and very good. Okay. Good and very good people in the image and likeness of God. So life is created in the image and likeness of God. Now notice I said life. She said man, and I'm not going to say that because man and woman and all of the in-between spectrum were created in the image of likeness of God. I'm going to be inclusive. Life is created in the image and likeness of God. Okay. So that just makes it a little more inclusive. Actually, it makes it way more inclusive. Um, with every good provided for them was commissioned to have, and I always, I take issue with the word dominion over all things. Uh, I prefer the translation stewardship over all things. Okay. But I think where the tripping off point on this is, is right here. There was just one thing that we was, were not to do. To eat of the tree of good and evil. And then she says, or to conceive for themselves a world of duality. So when we ate from the tree of good and evil, we created the illusion of separation. We created the illusion of duality for ourselves. God didn't do that for us. We did that all by ourselves. Um, I've heard it said otherwise, you know, when we eat from the, then it opened our consciousness, but I went a different way. She said, you know what, when we ate from that tree, we, we created the illusion of separation. We cannot separate ourselves from God because we are made out of God's substance. The invisible manifesting out of its own substance. We are manifestations of God. We were created by God, of God, for God. Um, so it, Ida is telling us that when we ate from the tree of good and evil, we created for ourselves the illusion of the world of duality. There's only one. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, now, the little last one, through the throughout the remainder of the Bible, we find people working their way out of a sense of dis delusion and illusion into conscious oneness with their source made manifest and uh, by their source, which was made manifest by Jesus. Okay. So Jesus. So the ultimate goal, according to Ida in this, um, mind remakes your world. Uh, the ultimate, teaching of Jesus was one of the ultimate teachings of Jesus was to come back and remind us there's only one. The illusion is just that it's an illusion of duality. There's omnipresence. It's all God. Do you agree with her? It's something that bears thinking about. It is something that bears thinking about. Uh, Sometimes we get light, fluffy readings that are feel-good readings, and some days we get readings that make us go, what? This is one of those for me, because I did it right there at the end. I was like, what? What what just happened here? I'm not sure. Um, so, Ida B. Elliot, and it's published in... So, this may be a... Mind Remakes Your World may be a collection of essays. Uh, so you might want to go read the rest of the essay because this says page 100 to 101. Um, and it says, and it says E.D. Holmes edited. So it was edited by Holmes. I don't know which Holmes, but a Holmes. It could have been our Holmes. I don't know. But I'm definitely going to take my book out and look into it. So um, the mission today, should we choose to accept it throughout the remainder of the Bible? It's like, okay, look. 
in the Garden of Eden story, we made this mistake. And we, we, and then the rest of the Bible is us trying to, to fix that mistake. Um, so what is the, the mission today? Should we choose to accept it? Is what she says to work our way out of the sense of illusion into conscious oneness. Okay. To work our way out of the sense of illusion into conscious oneness with our source. That is the mission today. It's a heck of a mission today. It's the same mission every day. We just use different words and arrange the letters in a slightly different pattern. And one day, one of the missions is going to strike you and you're going to go got it. All right. Um, so that is the mission today. The other mission is the same mission I give you every day, which is the, the spiritual practice of self-care. Do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever that looks like. All right. It can be as simple as taking a deep breath before you speak. Uh, you will never speak to anybody more than you speak to yourself. When you take that moment and think about what it is that you are going to say, that can honestly be one of the most loving, kind and compassionate things that you can do for yourself. Um, it, it also looks like taking a walk, taking a break, taking um, a nap. It is Saturday and today is my day off. And so barring anything unusual happening, I will take a nap. I will spend Saturday cuddling with my cats and have a catter day with them because one of them's already cuddled up to me right here. Um, and this, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some time off. I do have some things that I will work on, but they're my own personal projects and there's no time limit on them. So there are, you know, what I get done is what I get done. We don't have to grind, as they say, 24-7. We are allowed to rest. We are human beings, not human doings. That is what the spiritual principle of self-care is. It is taking time out to rest. Okay? Um, but it can also look like exercising. It can look like eating a good meal. It can look like eating a healthy meal. It can look like eating dessert first. Um, it can look like not saving the good stuff because your life is a special occasion. And I'm encouraging you to treat it as such. When we live a life of service, which mo most of us do, um, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. So you got to take care of yourself. Uh, love, kindness, and compassion also looks like saying no um, to something that is just really draining for you. And it can look like saying yes to something that pushes you a little bit out of your comfort zone or a lot out of your comfort zone. You know, all the more, the most interesting things are found just on the other side of your comfort zone. But it also means that, you know, it's, it's, it's good to take some time to spend in your comfort zone to rest. Okay. Um, I, I make, I, I make the joke about eating dessert first, but I do mean that because I mean it from the sense of don't save the good stuff. Uh, your life is a special occasion. We never know how, how long we've got. And so we should take every opportunity to live life to the fullest. All right. Whatever that looks like for you. So, uh, do that please. And, and remember that, you know, whatever is loving, kind, and compassionate for you, one, you are your own best test subject. Two, I'm encouraging you to create a habit. Uh, I'm encouraging you to create a well-worn path to the source of your own being, which is the infinite source of love, kindness, and compassion for those days when you need a little extra and when you meet people who need a little extra. It's all good. All right. Now, the other thing is, is also to um, Oh, OK. <laughs> I did not sleep that well last night. So, you know, hence the, the, the nap um, to make room for joy in your life. Joy is a quality of God. Therefore, joy is a quality of you. No matter what is going on in the world, you deserve joy. So I'm, I want to encourage you to make room for that. This spiritual practice of self-care, making room for joy is part of that. So eat dessert first, treat your life as a special occasion, practice love, kindness, and compassion on yourself, and make room for joy. It's a lot, right? But you're worth it. Okay. I also have the rest of the suggestions, which is do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like for you. I encourage you to drink plenty of water. We are still hitting the triple digits here. So hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. 
Uh, your brain works better when it is well hydrated. Your body works better when it's well hydrated. Your skin looks better when it's well hydrated. So hydrate. Okay. Um, and I also encourage you to get early in your day, bright light. Uh, the sun was up this morning, uh, by the time we got to the park. So I did get some good, you know, sun and shadow, but I got that early between seven and nine. Cause I was back home. You know, we were back at the car by eight 30 this morning. It was good. It was good. Um, but I got that early, early in my daylight, which, which helps to reset that. It's a natural hormone cycle called a circadian rhythm. Uh, when you get that early on early in your day between seven and nine, uh, bright light sunlight, it helps to reset that hormone balance, that circadian rhythm. You'll have more energy during the day. You'll sleep better at night. And if you get up before the sun or just can't get out in the sun in the appropriate time, artificial light will help too. All right. And if you need it, and I'm telling you this now so that when we get into the, the shorter days, you will already have it. If you Google seasonal effect disorder lamps, um, those are the right light. And so you can order those lamps or even just a light bulb and get that five to 10 minutes that will help to reset you. Um, it's, it's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. I've looked into them before. So, but that's one of the reasons why we get out in the morning to exercise so that I can do that. All right. And then the, the last one in this self-care is, is my Ernest Holmes quote, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you that you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around you all the time. It's what Ida was talking about. There's omnipresence. The, it, it is the invisible making it manifestations out of its own substance. Okay. It's all God. It's, it's all God. So there's omnipresence. There's one. And when we do the work to heal that illusion and come back into that sense of conscious oneness with the source of our being, you know, all things are better. All things are better. It's like we, that's how we create that world that works for everybody by healing the sense of illusion within ourselves that we move through the world differently and the world around us changes and we become a soft place, a safe place for people to work it out for themselves. Like we can't do this for anybody else. All we can do is give them the space to work it out for themselves, but we can make it a safe space for them to work it out for themselves. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm encouraging us all to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. And do what we need to do. Do what we need to do. All right. And as always, you can take Emma Curtis Hopkins advice. Look for the good and praise it. Look for the good and praise it. You want to change your mind. You want to change your mood. There, the best way to do it is gratitude, uh, volunteer service and gratitude. <laughs> you know, keep a gratitude journal, keep a list of good things. If you are having a moment where you were spiraling, sit down and count on one hand, all of the good things that you can see right in that moment. And if that's not enough, do the other hand too. And you got 10 toes. So, you know, you can get up to 20 things and it will help. There is science behind it. So look for the good praise. It. All right. Okay. I feel like there was something else I was going to say, but now I don't remember what it was. So I'm going to leap forward into uh, the social media. We are Creative Life Spark. Hang on. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark on the social medias that we are on. I encourage you to... Um, Check them out. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Uh, so feel free to, to check all that stuff out. I will always, always commend to you the uh, YouTube channel, the Soul Session playlist, especially since we just had, I mean, the last couple. Uh, no, they're all good. I can't, I couldn't pick my favorite. I couldn't pick a favorite. Although I did really enjoy, uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. I commend that one to you. So please. Uh, go check that out. All right. Um, where was I going? I don't know where I was going. So there we are. Uh, if you want to know what's going on with the center, please email info at creativelife.org. That'll get you on the constant contact and the hot links are hot. If it says click here now, it'll take you right to the information you want or the person that can help you get it. Okay. Now I am at the part where I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonder filled day, an awesome day. An amazing day, a catter day, um, a consciousness day, a 
healing the illusion day, a loving day, a kind day, a compassionate day, a getting to know the omnipresence day, a consistent day, a, a reckless abandonment to love day. That was from a couple of readings ago. A good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light. You are a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. Or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you are a godling. Know the truth of your being. Explore the truth of your being. Go back to get to know who God knows you to be, not who you've been told you are. All right? The best work that you can ever do in your life is to go back and get to know who God knows you to be. All right? So, uh, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. And since tomorrow, if you're watching this on Saturday, tomorrow will be Sunday, we will have an amazing service for you. Uh, he's sticking with Emerson for August, and so it'll be good. All right, beloveds, take care of yourself. Know that you are loved, and I will see you next time.